What's happening YouTube? Back of the day gamer here. Thanks for tuning into my channel and today I'm coming at you with another product review. Now I don't want you to think that that's what I'm turning my channel into because I'm definitely not. There's just been a lot of products coming out that I had to buy lately and I figured I'd review them to let you know what I thought. The first of those was the Sega Genesis flashback. Then there was the 8 bit Game Boy clone with 300 built-in games that plugs into your TV called the BitBoy. But today I'm coming at you with a product from old school called the Classic 2 HD. Now this bad boy plays original Nintendo and Super Nintendo cartridges. And unlike a lot of clone systems, it does not emulate. It plays them much like original hardware did. So the gameplay is exactly like back in the day, except in HD. It also has a aspect ratio switch and a NTSC PAL region switch, so you can play varieties of regional games. Comes in black and red or gray and purple. That's the one I have here. It's got four controller ports on the front, two for Super Nintendo, two for Nintendo, and it comes with some controllers. Damn, I left them on the other side of the room. Okay, the first one is a dogbone style controller for your original Nintendo needs. The second one is just like a Super Nintendo controller. Now these things at first, I found them to be a little sticky and I thought they were gonna suck, but after I played with them for a while and wore them in, they seem to work just fine, so they're good. If in fact you don't like those, you can just plug your original controllers right into the slots there. Now we're gonna be playing a bunch of different games from a bunch of different systems and whatnot on this sucker to really test the capabilities of it. And so far, I've been really pleased. So let's get right into this and see what you think. So the first game we're gonna toss in this bad boy to see how it works is none other than the legendary Contra. Now, as any retro gamer, including back in the day gamer, knows Contra's controls are spot on. They're fantastic, super responsive. So if anything is the least bit off, I will definitely know. The image on the sucker isn't quite as good as the, the, the mini or the classic. It's just not quite as bright, but you're not even gonna notice that. So forget that I mentioned it. Obviously, the minis are great little systems, small and portable, got the built-in games. The big plus is that they're HD, but you're limited to the games that come with it. With this, you can play any of your carts, and if you're watching this, that means you're a retro gamer, and that means you have plenty of original cartridges to play. The next game we're going to toss in here is my favorite game of all time, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Not Punch-Out, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. So clone systems are notorious for having lag and also our third-party controllers. This one is fantastic. As you can see, I am knocking people out left and right. Boom, boom, boom. No lag, spot on. Even here with Mr. Tyson. With him and, oh, I got knocked out. As Mike Tyson's famous quote goes, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. So, let's move on to the next game. Let's toss in a Tengen Black Cart here, Alien Syndrome. Everything seems to be working as it should on this. This is a solid title, make sure you get it. Then we're going to try another unlicensed title, Venice Beach Volleyball. I just got this game, and it is the first I am playing of it, so excuse me for not being very good. But right off the bat, I like this game. Looks good. You know, it's, uh, I'm not sure if this would play in a Retron 5. I would think so, but it doesn't matter because it's playing in this. Now we're going to try a multi-cart, something that usually does not work in clone systems. We're going to scroll through the menu, and we're going to pick the, one of the G.I. Joes. Now, this is a solid game. This is the more expensive of the two. I don't actually have this one, so I am happy to have it on this multi-cart, and especially since it works here in my Classic 2 HD. And we're gonna give Gunnack a try. 
Now here is a expensive rare shooter, another cartridge I do not have, which makes this 150 in one cart extra valuable to me, but I'm not a shooter fan. This one is solid. I do see what all the fuss is about here. The next system we're gonna try is Super Nintendo. We're gonna throw Castlevania 4 in here, see how this works. Now, this game obviously is a classic. The graphics are st absolutely stellar. They look great as you can see. Now the audio on this game is extra standout. So, you know, on this system, the audio is good and clean, but it comes in low. You just have to crank up the volume. The problem here is that a lot of new TVs have crappy volume because most people use a surround sound system, so you can have your TV all the way up to, you know, max the volume out and it's still not that loud. But if you're like most people and you do have a surround system, problem solved. So we're going to jump back onto that NES slot and I'm going to try a Famicom game with my cheapy knockoff $7 Famicom adapter. Tossing in Goonies. I've talked about this game several times. This is not the crappy American version we got here, Goonies 2. This is just Goonies on the Famicom. Super cheap, you can pick this sucker up, shipped for under five bucks. It's a solid game, for sure. It's like a puzzle platformer, decent graphics. Obviously, they look good here, because they're in HD. I like this game, definitely give it a shot. If you do not have a Famicom adapter, I was always looking for that Honeybee one. They've got several now that are just cheap. Like I said, I think this one was seven bucks, 10 shipped. Works like a charm. So since we've got that Famicom adapter in there, let's try this Famicom Multicart 401. This might even be better than the NES 150 in one, well, obviously because it has 400 games, but it has many games the other one doesn't. First, let's give Mighty Final Fight a whirl. Obviously, another super expensive Heavy Hitter came out late in the NES library. That's why it's expensive, but it's a killer game. Then we'll check out Bubble Bobble 2, an even more expensive game. I'm not a huge Bubble Bobble fan. I think I like two better than one. That usually never happens, but, uh, you know, you be the judge. Then we'll try this Mad Christmas game. Just some crazy, crappy knockoff. Not a good game at all, but uh, it's Christmas time, so I tossed it in there. And finally, we're going to test out one more thing, the Super Game Boy. I'm going to toss in one of my favorite Game Boy games, Motocross Maniacs. If you don't know about this game, check it out. It's super badass. Tons of fun. Dare I say, better than Excite Bike? Possibly. Not for sure, but possibly. Anyhow, obviously... Playing fine on here. The last thing I want to give a whirl on this review is Motocross Maniacs 2, which is a color Game Boy game. Now, color Game Boy games do not usually work in the Super Game Boy. Let's see what happens when we try it here in the Classic 2 HD. Ah, oh, The only thing that didn't work. Out of all those things we tried, 10 things, only one didn't work. But... That's because it doesn't work on any system. I just thought maybe this thing was rocking and rolling. Maybe it would work. So that's everything that I planned to try out on this system, and it all worked. Obviously, the color Game Boy didn't work in the Super Game Boy, but they never do. I was just, I was hoping, you know, you always miss 100% of the pitches you don't swing at. But everything we tried that should work, worked. Controllers, liked them, like I said, at first. They were a little off, but I don't know, after half an hour or so of playing, I wore them in and they worked just fine. Audio is good, just comes in. Not a big deal. The video looks great, just a touch dimmer than it is on the newer Classic and Minis. But like I said, you wouldn't even know that if you didn't put them side to side. I just watched a bunch of people's reviews and some people did. I just felt to throw that in there because when people tend to watch these reviews, they do nitpick at everything, and um, I think that about covers it. Back in the Day Gamer is definitely giving this his seal of approval for $70. You can't go wrong. I've had lots of problems with my Retron 5. I'm pretty fed up with it. This is a fantastic partial substitution. 
still can't play Genesis games on this or Game Boy Advance or Game Boy Color like I can on the Retron 5, but this thing, and it's only 70 bucks. Definitely pick up one of these for a Christmas gift for that retro gamer in the family. Just want to say, in no way is Back in the Day Gamer sponsored by this product. I just thought it'd be cool. I picked it up. There's my two cents worth. Let me know what you think in the comments below, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And until next time, keep it retro!